to me joining AVSI, I had a slight background with working with children. I worked at a Boys and Girls Club for about two and a half years, and I loved it. Met a lot of different kinds of personalities and children of all backgrounds, some of which included those on the spectrum. And while I was working there, I was also undergrad, and in my degree and in my classes, there were a lot of students and peers who were BIs, who were behavior technicians. And when I got to talking with them, they all loved what they did. And they really emphasized how much fun it was and how rewarding it was. And to me, for anything, especially a job, the, the rewarding aspect and the thought that you know you're doing good work and that you're making a difference in anyone's lives is that right there is what really motivates me to do great work and to put forth my best effort. So just knowing that in this situ in this environment I'll be able to do meaningful work and being able to see progress and to be able to work with all kinds of different individuals, I mean that to me is is worth it. So I would say those are some of the big reasons for what made me interested in becoming a behavior technician. So this was 2020, so everything was virtual. So everything was via, tele, uh, via Google Meets. And so when we had our training group, it was, um, it was a call similar to this. And when we finally were doing breakout rooms and we got to sort of meet each other, the trainees, um, I really enjoyed that aspect of being able to, finally, we're learning what to, how to become a behavior technician. And when we were in those groups, being able to bounce off ideas and answer our own questions um, amongst the other trainees, I really enjoyed that because we were all over the, the country. We were all from different backgrounds and different experiences. So it was a good opportunity to meet different people who had similar passions and a also able to learn from each other. So I really enjoyed that aspect. And I also loved how much support there was. I remember, um, I, I think it's during some of the modules, if you had a question, you would call up Pauline. And I really like, I use that all the time. And I, I really liked how there was so much support and so much help because with that, I mean, for anyone, if you want good workers, your training has to be great. And I think the training here was great and produces great behavior therapists. I would say it's a little bit tough to pinpoint one exactly, but in general, very exciting experiences are when you're working with a client and you finally have a major breakthrough or you can see major progress from when you first started. So whether that be a reduction in maladaptive behaviors, oh wow, I haven't seen so-and-so do this to themselves in a while, we really worked on that. Or maybe um, an increase in skill acquisition, just something that you, when you first started, you're like, wow, we got a ways to go. And then finally seeing that visual progress, it's very reinforcing for, for us and for myself especially. So I've been with my clients well over a year. I have three clients and just being able to see and recognize the different advancements and progress is very rewarding and very exciting every time something like that happens. So um, while it's tough to name one, that's definitely something that is very exciting. And also the shout out or recognition that I got about a month ago from one of the families of my clients, that was also really nice. I got an email from Natalie who stated that one of the families that are, of a client that I work with um, sort of wanted to acknowledge me. That was really nice. And when I next saw the, the mom and saw the family, I said, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And they're like, yeah, you work really well with, with their client, with their kid. And so that was really, that was a very exciting and proud moment I had as well. I believe things that I have done well and continue to do well 
is to absorb information, whether that be during training or during overlapping with a future client or from feedback from supervisors, the ability, my ability to absorb information, there's going to be a lot of skills, teaching and information, for example, when you overlap or when you're doing training. And so it's very difficult to remember every single thing, but just being able to gather as much as you can whenever new hot, uh, new trainees overlap with my clients, I always suggest to them everything that I will explain throughout session is very specific to that one client, but you can use any of those skills and any of those various ways to run session with other clients and see what works. And so pick, um, being able to definitely pick and choose and try out what works for yourself and what works for the, the client, being able to use all those experiences from the past and from training, I think has definitely been positive for me and also the ability to adapt. So what, whenever you're working with a client, you could be in very different situation, uh, environments. So you could be at a clinic, you could be at a home, you could go out in public at a store, you can go to a park. And so, uh, I think that with my various substitute, uh, sessions, I've worked with several clients all around the area and it's always different. The environment is always different. The sessions are always different. So definitely being able to adapt and make the best of where you're at and from how your clients are also really helps. The first piece of advice I would want to give to new team members is patience. So definitely have the patience and the tenacity to keep working at something. So it's going to be a lot of repetition and it's going to require a lot of patience whenever you're running these programs with our clients and so don't get discouraged if after several weeks you think to yourself oh man i'm not really sure if there's any real real pairing or maybe oh i don't really think they they want to be with me now just give it a lot of patience the rapport will build and with that you will get better at running programs and as I think what is also very important for new team members is the communication, especially with your supervisors. The majority of the supervisors I've worked with have always put communication with their behavior technicians as a, of the utmost important because when you're assigned a case, you really are a team with you yourself, the client, the supervisor, other behavior technicians on the case. And so communication, um, more specifically with if you have a question on how to run programs, if you have questions on data collection, or maybe if you notice something's just not working, we should probably adjust the programs or maybe adjust the way we run sessions. Communication with supervisors is huge. And uh, I've received several compliments from my supervisors that appreciate the communication because there is going to be a time when you're working with your clients after several months, you're going to be with your clients much, much, many more hours than supervisors. So you're going to know your clients. I wouldn't say better than your supervisors, but at the time you'll know them how they're doing much better than them because supervisors will only be on for, will only observe and supervise for a limited amount of hours. So communication among your supervisors and also if you can the communication with the family of the clients is always helpful whenever you end session and if you're gonna leave or walk clients out to their to their parents let them know how session went and let them know what, what went right what went wrong and that really helps too because now everyone's on the same page of how sessions going how your clients are are doing and I think that it's very important